So uh, thank you for everyone who is here so far. I'm really, really excited for this training call. Um, I met Terry and Chris when we were in Vegas at the Business Mastery event just a couple of weeks ago. Terry and I connected at the back of the room at one stage and we ended up <laughs> engrossed in conversation throughout the whole of lunchtime. And uh, we, I, I, re I really felt a great connection with him. Um, he, uh, Terry is a vet. He has a veterinary hospital in Utah. And his story is pretty incredible. Um, they really inspired me when I listened to what they had to say while they were speaking on stage. Chris is his wife. They work this business together. And in the business, they, at 2013, I believe, that they, they've only started network marketing on their CEO level in the company, which is pretty amazing. Um, consistently top salespeople in the United States, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and Terry is a member of the Wellness Council. So it's a really amazing pleasure to have you speak um, to our guys tonight because what I realized is and I think Terry you know the communication that we had opened up a whole can of worms I suppose for me because I saw an opportunity to break into a whole new market um, for our guys and indeed um, people around Europe um, in my previous company, a huge part of what we did was in the animal sector. Our products could be used on animals. And this opened up um, a, a whole market for people where they could concentrate their business in those particular areas. And I know for me, I know a lot of the people that are on this call personally, they have pets at home, they're involved professionally in the animal industry, whether it be, you know, um, eventing horses, stud farms. There's lots of different people from different professions within the animal world so when you and I spoke this was like wow our product number one can be used on animals I wasn't sure of that and I communicated that to you and number two this this could open up a whole new sector of business for us so when you said that you had investigated a lot of our products on behalf of Deanna when she asked you to do so and you came back with phenomenal results and and reasons why we should be promoting in this area this is actually something that you guys are are, are hoping to open up as a a line of training and um, from you being the source down so I'd like to thank you Terry for jumping on this call um, and for sharing your insight I'd love to ask you to um, tell us a little bit about your story your background and just give, give the guys a little bit of insight as to who Terry Silkman really is okay well I'd be happy to do so and thank you for that glowing introduction I, I will try to live up to it is my microphone about right for you all is it too loud too soft are you hearing me okay we can hear you perfectly Okay, so uh, as Lisa Marie talked or, or alluded to, um, we've been a veterinarian for about 30 years. That was not my first occupation. I grew up in eastern Colorado. Um, geographically, if you're somewhat familiar with the states, it would be about 300 kilometers east of the Rocky Mountains in the High Plains. And my mom and dad were farmers and ranchers. And so that's the life that Chris and I thought we were going to do. And I guess in the sense of what does network marketing do, we certainly are happy to talk about animals, but I guess if I can add value to somebody who maybe is struggling or is thinking about this, part of our story will relate to that. So <clears throat> she and I met at university. Uh, I actually, at that point in time, I got a degree in farm and ranch management, and that's what I thought I was going to do all of my life. And we went out to the farm, and as the saying goes in farming, sometimes there's too much rain, and sometimes there's too much drought, and sometimes there's too much rain, and sometimes interest rates are 20%, and sometimes those all come together when you're trying to start a business. And so we struggled in that business for several years, and ultimately it became apparent that we were either going to lose all of our assets and be farmhands for someone, which I didn't think was the kind of life that my family would prosper and thrive from or we were going to do something different and I'd never really been a particularly studious individual never really convinced myself that I was that type of person but for whatever reason uh, we decided we could qualify and would get into veterinary school and so we left the farm with three small children from age four to just a baby and found a way to survive and work and and help each other through six years of pre-vet and vet school and and that was at 35 when I started my second uh, big career. And uh, we worked uh, in that profession. I'm 62 now. So we worked in that profession for the past almost 30 years. And 
enjoyed it. Uh, it's given back far more than it asked uh, from us. Uh, in my estimation, we've gotten to meet lots of wonderful people and learn lots of incredible things. And as especially in the years since 2008, my mind's been drawn and my heart's been drawn to the struggles that a lot of people have. And so I, I had felt like we had earned, learned a little bit about entrepreneurialism, learned a little bit about jumping into the deep end and figuring out how to wade into the darkness and make it all work. And so that's part of what led me to RX. Uh, that wasn't the direct path. Actually, you'd alluded to Chris's success. And she started in this business in about 2013 uh, and started me on product because of the kind of hours that I was working and the wear on my body. And so over the next <clears throat> few years, I got a, a pretty good sense of the quality of the products and what they could do for me and how they helped me. And uh, so then as we moved along, uh, I decided that, well, I would participate in this business more fully because it served both of my passions, which is uh, the engagement into health, not just uh, four-legged uh, patient health, but two-legged patient health and engagement into entrepreneurialism. So we've uh, invested a lot in the last year in particular in uh, coaching with some really incredible individuals and trying to learn some other skill sets. And it's been a bit humbling, you know, trying to be the expert in one profession and without trying to sound arrogant, I'm a pretty darn good veterinarian uh, in certain aspects of things. And so taking a step back and trying to rebuild and uh, having to say, yeah, you don't know everything that you need to learn, but you know that you can do it has been a really exhilarating journey. Uh, you know, that butterflies pit in your stomach. Uh, do I know everything I need to know? But it's been, it's been a wonderful venture. And so that's a little bit about us and our background. And again, wherever the conversation goes this evening, I'll try to give you my best impressions and I guess I'll give you some sense of where my skill sets are. I know uh, Lisa Marie has alluded to horses and things like that. And while I've done a lot of different species, in the last 20 years, I've been pretty focused uh, at a fairly high level in companion animal medicine. So if we want to kind of peel back onion layers and really get down deep, I'm going to be able to be a lot more used to you in the dog and cat and companion animal world. Uh, it's been a long time since I've picked up a pair of hoof, hoof testers and done colics and other things, but I do still kind of know a little bit about those things. And for anybody who wants it, if it's of value to you, when we finish this up, I do have several PDFs that I've put together for Deanna about certain things uh, that are useful in the non traditional medicine world and really that's where I was trained so I've learned a lot of the more holistic approach uh, as I've moved along and been interested in it but I do have some pretty good PDFs about things uh, that you can use in equine medicine uh, that are useful and then uh, a fair bit of stuff about small animal medicine and I would be happy to pass that along to anybody who would like it. That, that so that's 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 I, I hope a good introduction to what I can what I who I am and what I can do to possibly be of use to you. Yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Uh, that's the the conversation very much that we had had um, on that day, which is which is what struck me because you were just such an interesting guy and your background was so diverse and how you came from being a veterinarian, a veterinarian to um, yeah. that wellness yeah. in um, yeah. in it, we, it, we, Am I hearing feedback now? Um, so I think I spoke to a couple of the team and I said, hey guys, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what questions you'd like to ask? Where are we with this and what would you like to know? So a big thing was, how can we incorporate the products that we are currently using every day from within our range into the lives of our animals? And how will that enhance their lives? What should we be looking for? A little bit about your experience and um, I, 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 that you can offer to everybody as a starting point. Okay. Well, I guess let's maybe start from the start. I do get questions about safety and efficacy, uh, and that's part of uh, that situation is what's safe. Well, a lot of people have learned that uh, there is some unknown principle in grapes that are toxic to pets. Uh, and 
that question actually came back or came back to me just after I think the Vegas meeting where we met. Uh, one of the RX people had indicated, well, we've got some people concerned about cranberry and grape, and so I went back and specifically did some research on those two things. Cranberry does not seem to be an issue at all. There's been no known reports to multiple poison control agencies or anything in the literature about cranberry toxicity. So I'm not sure where that comes from, but I guess just to let people know that's not an issue. And we don't really use much of the grape itself in most RX products. Most of it is grapeseed extract, and that does not seem to be an issue at all. Whatever the problem is in grapes, it occurs with both seeded and seedless grapes, and so it appears to be something in the fruit or the juice or something that isn't associated with grape seed extract. So the only other one that I frequently get questions about relative to dental care is xylitol, which is in the uh, Revive toothpaste. But again, in terms of toxic levels, uh, the best research that I can come up with is if a 30-pound dog were to eat a whole tube of toothpaste at a time, it might maybe start to get close to the toxic level. So I guess what I would say in the short answer to a question of anybody were interested in using the RX products for a pet, in the sense of what we've learned as veterinarians, above all else, do no harm. Well, there is absolutely no harm that's going to come. Uh, you might, at worst, if you really got lavish with it, create a little GI upset uh, if you gave too much of the super fruits at one time or something like that, uh, uh, just from, like you and I, eating too much fruit at one time. Uh, but uh, there, there isn't anything that I would say that I've come across in either the equine world or the companion animal world that would say toxicity is a problem. So that's, I guess, one part of the answer. The other question that re frequently gets raised is the aromatherapy portion of things, the, the prime portion of things. And again, in dogs, not really a problem uh, to use it topically or to use some of the stuff uh, that we use, uh, you know, like you can use Sentry uh, in your water as a, an immune booster and as an antiseptic, and I don't think there's any issues that way. Probably no issues for cats either, except that they groom themselves a bunch, and cats are really, really, really sensitive uh, olfactory or, or their, their, their sense of smell is quite profound and the licking things and uh, at least most of what I've read from the people who do aromatherapy are pretty conservative about trying to use it in cats because whether you do the raindrop technique or whatever else you do, uh, the cat uh, typically has the potential to, uh, to lick it and they're, they're not really cool with uh, aromatherapy for the most part. Uh, it's not toxic to them, but I don't think it's an ideal patient to use essential oils with. Interesting, yes. Yeah. So um, from my perspective, since we spoke, I have a dog, a beautiful Japanese Akita that I've told you about. And in some cases, people actually think that I love her more than I love my kids. <laughs> we are, she's, she's very, very special to us. Like I suppose anybody that has a dog knows that, that bond that you have. She's amazing. She's here by my side at the moment. So I came home and I thought, okay, I've got all the products in the range as most of us do and they're in the cabinet. And I thought, let's get to work here. Um, you did give me any indication that anything might be uh, have a negative effect on her so why not start testing it out so I've been putting some moa into her food every day I've been putting a spoonful of the co fractional coconut fractionated coconut oil into her food every day and um, I haven't quite started her on the supplements yet because it cost me a fortune as it is to give my kids and me and also because I wasn't quite sure I wanted to talk to you about that I've washed her with the revive shampoo and conditioner and I have brushed her teeth with the uh, toothpaste. She looks amazing. She's in great form. She, her coat is absolutely glowing. I can tell by her, she's, she's, this has only been two weeks in and she's looking absolutely amazing. So for me, I'm, I'm seeing the results. Um, is there anything else that I could be using on, on my dog? As most people that would be on tonight will either have a dog or know somebody that has them, maybe a client that they're already selling to. They could recommend that they use some of the products um, for, for any added benefits. Anything else that you could suggest that maybe we could incorporate into our pets' home lives um, in terms of the range? Well, certainly. Um, I guess one of the things, and you and I had had a conversation about uh, one of your friends uh, and a pet in kidney failure. So one of the things that we've known for years 
just as a standalone ingredient, and obviously we have one and we have an additive that makes it much more useful, is the BioPro Q. So I probably most everyone there is, is familiar with that product, but the Bio stands for BioPrene, and BioPrene is kind of a co-ingredient that makes it where the coenzyme Q10 is much more biologically available. You absorb it out of the intestinal tract better, and it actually works physiologically much better. So it's kind of it's kind of like CoQ10 on steroids, if you will, in the sense of in enhanced effect uh, by using them both together. So what's the reason to do it? Well, in most of us, most of us primates, or at least most of us Westerners uh, that tend to eat poor diets and things like that, the, our heart is our aging organ. So we worry about coronary artery disease and plaques in the heart and things like that. The veterinary patients seem to be, especially cats, seem to be a lot weaker in their kidneys. And so in my experience, while they suffer from a lot of the same diseases that you and I do, it's much more likely for a pet to die as a consequence of kidneys that uh, have quit working adequately than it is some of the things we do. And so why would you use BioPro uh, Q? Well, the effects are quite well known. Uh, you get increased um, kidney function effect and you actually get some antioxidant protection and because the kidneys are one of the big janitors for the body and they have to deal with toxic waste, it's quite useful to them to try to do something that's going to protect them in the sense of longevity. And so even in a situation like the one that you relate to me with your friend, you can use it in a failure situation to help those surviving kidney cells help the body and ultimately forestall failure. But preventatively, there is no reason, in my estimation, not to use something like uh, CoQ10 uh, in, in a young patient as just part of their dietary regimen. Uh, other things, uh, it definitely has heart benefits, as it does for people. It has uh, mental health benefits in the sense of preventing um, metabolic or oxidative injury to central nervous system tissue. And so, again, it's <clears throat> it's something that we've used traditionally just as a standalone supplement, especially for patients in kidney disease, for years and years and years. So it's again, that's one of the things that. I think has direct effect and probably more important effect uh, for a veterinary patient uh, than it even does for you and I just because of the differences in kidney function. Um, Vinali, Vinali has a lot of really useful things. Uh, you know, Magostein is actually a COX-2 inhibitor and for your clients who understand I don't know. I, I hope I'm giving you appropriate names because I'm not sure in Europe the same names apply, but there's lots of COX-2 inhibitors uh, that are used in this country, and I presume there, to suppress arthritic inflammation and other inflammatory things. And so here they would have names like Celebrex. Um, well, that, that one comes to mind first off. But anyway, magistine is actually a natural COX-2 inhibitor, and it has a lot of other uh, really good antioxidant and, and immunosuppressive uh, kind of effects. In. So for something like rheumatoid arthritis, which dogs don't get directly like people do, but they do get autoimmune arthritis from lupus or things like that, or if you have a dog that's just got traumatic arthritis that is suffering from hip dysplasia or some type of uh, other injury. Uh, the uh, magistine is just one of the things in Vinali that would be extremely useful, uh, I think, to most every pet where you would be using some type of aspirin type, well, we don't really use ibuprofen or Tylenol in pets, but some type of medication as an anti-inflammatory medication, I would say not just magistine, but uh, other natural anti-inflammatories. Uh, turmeric has a very good anti-inflammatory effect and is pretty safe to use. So does curcumin, so does resveratrol, which is a common ingredient of a lot of great things, and I believe we have some of that in Vinali. I'm sorry, in Moa as well. Um, so a lot of those things that I'm educating myself about, uh, we have products that have those ingredients in them, and so I would say in general, the ones that I would find most useful right off the bat would be the BioPro-Q, the Vinali, and the MOA, but I don't think um, as far as any toxic effect or detoxification effect that anybody can go wrong with using um, Restorex as well. Um, 
there would be, uh, you know, especially, well, in, in, in his day job, if you had a pet that uh, you were concerned with that might have gotten into some toxic dose of things, this obviously isn't being Dr. Google. Don't treat those things at home. Go see your veterinarian because there would be specific things. But I think in a follow-up uh, to something uh, that you had to deal with some type of toxic effect, or uh, metabolic toxins, things like kidney failure, liver failure, those types of things. Restorex would be an excellent product uh, to use for pets that are not going to have the mechanisms that our bodies naturally have when they're working well to detoxify, not just organic or inorganic things that you might not want to ingest, but those same type of metabolic toxins that have to be dealt with on a continuous basis. Wow, okay. Now, I know that in terms of our four-legged friends, they range in size and pedigree and all sorts, so it's very hard to get a, a set um, dosage that I could ask you for, but a rough guideline as to how maybe if um, I've got a big dog, someone else might have a small chihuahua. Um, how, how, a guideline as to how we might estimate what would be the correct dosage to give them as just a, a daily nutritional supplement as opposed to a treatment. Sure. Well, I would say, you know, like you and I, uh, there's lots of different sizes and species of you and I as well. I am. I would say in general that most of the supplementation, oh, I suppose if you got down to a three or four pound Yorkshire or something like that, you might want to try to cut doses down a little bit. But I would say most of the time, probably the normal recommended dose on the bottle uh, that you and I would take for most pets uh, would be probably in a close to physiologic range. You know, if you're looking for therapy, uh, I've given you some suggestions uh, for your friend, but if you're looking for therapeutic things like you've got a pet in a kidney failure or a liver failure, you might want to try to push something like Restorex to a twice level as long as they weren't having digestive upset or things like that. Uh, certainly the uh, things like the Q10, uh, you know, I think I gave you some uh, potential doses there or I might not have, but doubling or tripling uh, as long as you're not seeing any intolerance digestively would probably be a reasonable thing if you're looking at trying to treat a disease condition rather than just, um, you know, normal maintenance or normal supplementation. I, I see I'm predicting here all the animal lovers auto delivery going up by <laughs> double next month with <laughs> this increased supplementation in the house. Um, I have one particular question there from Rose that has come in. She has a pedigree cat and she was wondering, well, did you have any recommendations for anything for digestive problems because of fur balls that the cat has? So any, anything that she could maybe, uh, that you could suggest for her cats? Well, I guess it's a good topic. Um, a lot of the research that I've seen in recent years kind of flies in the face of saying that the hairballs are a problem. The cats actually groom themselves all the time. So if they're vomiting, unless it's an unusual amount of hair, I mean, if you're seeing what seems like half a cat coming back up, maybe it's a specific problem there. But most of the good feline enter gastroenterologists these days will say that Generally, if you're seeing your cat vomiting frequently, the hair is just a byproduct. It's there anyway because they're grooming. And so if they're vomiting, it's probably some other disease process. And we seem to see a lot of cats in our practice that you know, inflammatory bowel disease or food allergy problem is a probably if you really work it up and you get to the bottom of things that seems to be the disease we put on more than just hairball ingestion. Um, so I guess I would say, what would I treat a cat for, uh, out of the RX supplements for inflammatory bowel disease, it would get back to probably Vanali would be my number one, uh, and Mo would probably be my number two. So if you're looking at something and, and I guess for your friend, I'm sorry, I, I should have paid attention. Uh, her name was Rose. Rose. So for Rose, uh, I'm sorry, Rose, uh, for specific problems, if you're seeing constipation, and that seems to be an issue for you, then it really might be a hair effect because that seems to be more likely the problem uh, if, if the mechanical blockage of the hair is the issue, that's more likely to be the situation. Uh, what do I use for that? It's not an RX product, but what I use is, a, we would call it Miralax, and I'm not sure if you have it as a, a 
similar product there, but just a little pinch on the kitty's food, uh, you know, basically would keep the stool soft so that that hair doesn't act like reinforcing steel and concrete. And usually it's a pretty good way to treat uh, constipation that's very tolerable. The cats like the taste of it okay. They don't usually shy away from the food and you could just sprinkle a little on the food. If it's vomiting, <clears throat> I guess I would say long distance across the pond, I would say probably take a look at uh, and maybe have your veterinarian help you work through the workup for food allergy or inflammatory bowel disease. Brilliant. That's great. I have a couple of questions coming in here now, but I think I'll get back to them in a second. I just wanted to elaborate on um, just something that you helped me with during the week, um, which has really um, instilled so much more confidence in me that this is, uh, a, 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 this is amazing. This is, for me, it excites me. It's a whole new area of Arix to explore. Um, a friend, just for everyone on the call, a friend of mine contacted me last week. We just happened to be chatting and she told me about her distress, that her dog had been very suddenly diagnosed with lymphoma and the chemotherapy treatments that he needed couldn't be performed because his kidneys were failing. They were so weak that the treatment would have been put too much stress on his kidneys and he may not have survived it. So the vet had said to her, look, if it's possible for you to get his kidney function up, we can then consider the chemotherapy. Um, she said, she happened to tell me this in passing and I said, hey, let me just send Terry a message and I, I didn't want to be too presumptuous that you'd answer Terry, but it was just more so I, I, in the moment I just felt like hey maybe maybe we could do something here and Terry recommended that the dog take some Moa and Vanali he said it can't hurt but it may help this was on Tuesday of last week and by Friday she sent me the most amazing message and um, she had been putting the Moa into the dog's water the dog at the stage point in time that we've been speaking was very lethargic had no energy his eyes were dull he wasn't eating he wasn't drinking he was just he was in a very very limp state. She was terribly worried about him. She really didn't think he'd even make it to the weekend with the way that he was behaving completely out of character. When he started to take, she started getting the moa, uh, she, she injected it into his mouth initially and then he started getting his appetite back and his and his uh, he was drinking the water again so she was putting it into the water. By Friday the dog was back to himself in, in a sense that his energy levels were up, he was jumping around, he was playing with the kids. She felt like she had a little glimmer of hope back and she felt that it's down to the products and might I say this girl is a rep with a, with a different company so it was great for her to be able to get such great results so quickly from the products now I'm not saying the products is going to save the dog and um, but it gave him a little bit of quality of life back so that was really really amazing for um, a testimony for for us I suppose but also a great start um, and, and, and proof of the use of the products with animals can really help them and very very efficiently and very fast now it kind of leads me on to my next question Terry um, when she brought the bottle of Moa to her vet to say hey this is what I'm going to give the dog the vet immediately had reservations because of one or two of the ingredients and I know that we alluded to this at the very start but he said if it's been recommended by another vet please by all means if it can't harm the dog go ahead and let's see how it goes she has since gone back to her vet and he has obviously seen the improvement in the dog and they're considering the treatment now um but he now has said, what is this stuff? Where did it come from? I've never seen it before. Um, I need to find out a little bit more about it. Many people on this call, myself included, know people in the professional animal industry, as I said earlier on, whether they're vets, whether they work in you know, kennels or stud farms or wherever it might be in the professional an animal industry. And they may be thinking, hey, this could be a good opportunity for me to go and speak to people like you. Do you have any pointers for people on what they should say, what they shouldn't say, what they should avoid, how they should approach it? I mean, as a professional, if I came to you as a non-professional and I'm going to tell you about my miracle product that's amazing and it's this, you're going to be immediately standoffish. Am I right? You're going to say, hey, 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 hang on, who's this person that doesn't have, you're not on my level in terms of my, my, my profession? So what should we be looking out for? Because we want to bring people with us. We want to show people these amazing products, but we don't want to turn them off in the same thing. And this is a big, big, big thing that I came up across 
in my previous company where the products were promoted as um, for use with animals, but too many people went out and went, oh, look, you know, it happened. And, and it, it, it doesn't work. So we want to get the correct line of, of uh, the correct tracks to run on from the very start before this, before everyone runs off tomorrow and runs down to the local vet and says that they have the cure, <laughs> the miracle potion. What's your advice on that for us? Well, I wish I had a magic bullet there. I really do. I guess I would say, you know, it's interesting personality-wise. I'm that guy who almost always would listen to anybody, at least for a little while, and try to say, okay, is this something that I think might be valid or might not be valid? But I have the same problem, even being somebody who sort of speaks their language, uh, that you've alluded to. And I guess I would say, I definitely see use for these things in veterinary medicine, and I guess before I forget, I'm going to go off track of your question just a moment, forgive me, but uh, we did talk about your pet's lymphoma as well, and I forgot when you asked me about the question about something that uh, has proven effectiveness, um, the, uh, the omega-3s. Uh, we didn't talk about that. Uh, so what do we call it? Omega flies off my mind right now, but our omega supplements. Uh, same type of situation. Uh, kidney cell health, there's definite proven effectiveness for over 30 years that especially lymphoma and possibly other cancers actually have a preference for using carbohydrate and protein. And in the presence of omega-3 fatty acids, you're essentially doing a, not necessarily always curative, but there are even diets that are made uh, that are called cancer diets that uh, incorporate a higher level of omega-3 fatty acids uh, because of the proven effectiveness at, if you will, shutting down the ability of the cancer cells to use nutrients uh, in the presence of omega-3s. So that would be another thing, and I'd forgotten to mention that when uh, we talked about uh, other products that we could use. So I believe I put that in your email uh, when, when we talked about, I didn't know uh, that Ro Rose's pet had, no, it wasn't Rose, Rose's kidney. I didn't know the other pet had um, lymphoma when we first started talking about the kidneys, but I think that's one not to miss. Now getting back to how do you convince an educated person that they might want something that is out of their realm of education, I guess is the way that I would put that. And I think for a lot of us, a lot of the time, probably our education doesn't necessarily serve us as well as it could serve us because uh, in the sense of our education, especially in our field, we become at least skeptical if not cynical. And I fight that same battle as well. So I said, if I had a magic bullet, well, I will share the best one that I have because I found it to be frustrating to talk with my colleagues about it. I found it frustrating to talk with other people uh, that I would think would have, well, not that I think, based on my knowledge of the product, that would have extreme use for it. Things like doctors of chiropractic, osteopathists, estheticians, especially for part of our product. I mean, there, there's no question that we would be of value even if they didn't want to be part of the direct marketing thing, if they just wanted to do the retail model, just the business to business model, we would have huge value to all of those individuals. And yet trying to break through that resistance, well, what's my magic bullet? What's the best thing that I know? If you have a good relationship with somebody, that's huge. Uh, if you're just trying to come in and sort of, uh, you know, crusade the world for this uh, in the sense of the healthcare profession, it's going to be a pretty, well, it's going to be like a crusade. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Um, I, I would say the experiences that uh, your veterinarian just had with <clears throat> that individual, I'd say, you know, what, just like we talked in Vegas, stories sell, facts tell, stories sell. So, a good story, especially a story that can be verified uh, or at least closely verified, probably is a better way to try to approach the situation. Um, if you have a relationship with your veterinarian that is reciprocal, if, for example, you do some service for them and they feel really comfortable about the service that you provided for them in the sense of your integrity and your authenticity. I think that's probably 
a useful tool to try to get you past some of that resistance. And then I would say, just kind of like, I guess I approach almost everybody, asking rather than telling uh, is a good thing. You know, if you have a product that could do this, would you find that interesting and desirable? If you had a product that would do this, uh, would you find it? So I hope some of the information that we shared previously, uh, you know, if you had a product that nutritionally could enhance the anti-cancer effect or could it enhance the other things that you're doing as far as a uh, kidney treatment effect or could enhance uh, some of the treatments relative to digestive disorders, would that be something that you might be interested in? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I guess what I would my own personal approach was, would be, uh, I try not to do too much talking uh, in, while I'm in that situation, which is kind of contrary to that, that veterinary client type thing. Uh, that's one of the things that I've been humbled with. I really can't be an authority to anybody when I go out in the world and approach them with our business. You kind of have to be more of an interviewer. So I just keep interviewing and trying to find out what they might be interested in and then then I use the tools because Deanna is so good. Dr. Strand is so good. We may start to do some things because I think RX, and I'm not, not speaking for them, but I know they're looking at what we might do as far as a pet line. I have no agenda on that and don't know where it's going to occur. I would say it would probably, in, in reverse engineering, if they start getting lots of demand for it, then we'll probably start uh, moving it forward a little more free, a uh, little, little, little more rapidly, but yeah. that's my approach is, you know, if I go in to talk to somebody, you know, I've even, you know, used people where I might have used to say, for example, I get chiropractic care from some sports injuries. Well, I have somebody that I rely on that I like pretty well, but occasionally I've tried the technique of going in having somebody else uh, do their stuff with me and just talk about what we do and then ask the question. And depending on the response they get, as I said, I just say, well, you know, uh, here's something you might want to take a look at. And then I let people who are, are very, very charismatic and are pretty much expert in their fields like Deanna and Dr. Strand, uh, I let them do the talking for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think something very poignant that you said, look, it's like that with all, uh, uh, whether we're dealing with our four-legged or two-legged friends, that, you know, facts tell and stories sell. And when all of us uh, begin to use the products at home on our animals, because that's part of what we do is use the products ourselves so we can recommend them. So if we can use the products on our own animals, it will make it easier for us to have testimonies and stories to be able to have the confidence to therefore go out and recommend. And as this grows, as you said, hopefully something will be coming down the line and um, I did have a brief chat with Deanna about it it was actually Deanna that said to me get Terry on a call with your team he, he I'm sure he'd be open to do that and I think she wants to see what's the reaction going to be out there in terms of this line um, and you've got you've definitely got a supporter in me and I know there's a lot of very excited people on our team that couldn't wait for this call tonight to find out a little bit more we can't give all the information tonight but just a little bit more about how can we incorporate this and I think all the questions that are coming in is an absolute testament to the excitement that people have I mean they're just they're literally just just coming in there as you can I don't know if you can see them Terry but maybe if we if we give just five minutes really, really quick to the point answers and um, just so that people feel that they've got a little bit of value here. There's a couple of questions. Um, would you mind just answering them really, really quickly before we close off for the evening? Not, not at all. I, w- I would be happy to try to give my best answer. You're fantastic. So we're working from the bottom up. My Springer has server arthritis on his front leg knuckle. Could I use ice on them? He doesn't like the smell. Or could she use the ice? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, no reason why you could not do that. Absolutely. So like we do, mix it with the coconut oil, massage it in, let it work its magic. Great. Mm -hmm. So that will go, guys, for, I suppose, any injury that an animal might have. Um, And and I guess, again, she got a few clues, uh, you know, the... The, 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 the Magistine products, uh, you know, uh, things like um, Moa, you know, I think would be also uh, useful because she's probably using some anti-inflammatory therapy. And, and, and it's not that Moa is going to replace that, but 
obviously the advantage of using something like that as compared to the things that you have to use is the side effect issues, the especially kidney issues and liver issues that come from those things. So even if you have to use it, if you can use something else that's uh, that's going to be more biologically Beneficial. tolerable uh, than what uh, the synthetics that we used, uh, then I think it's going to be of advantage. Brilliant. Okay. Um, I, we, we know that your preference, uh, you work closely with cats and dogs, but I have a question here on racing pigeons. Uh, my partner has racing pigeons. What products would be good to help with stamina, stamina and prevent illness? Racing pigeons. Well, I'm going to be very truthful with you. Avian is probably my weakest area, um, and I'll try to find out. I'll do some research if I can, and if I can, I'll pass on uh, to uh, Lisa Marie. I, I'm not sure that I can give you any answer that's accurate on that no question. Problem. I'm sorry. I appreciate that because there's no point in giving so it, it, it if you don't quite uh, know. So my cat broke his leg above the paw, now stiffly bandaged, no painkillers. How can I make him comfortable? Uh, I didn't hear all the question. Oh, beg your pardon. So my cat broke his back leg above the paw. He's stiffly bandaged. He has no painkillers. How can I make him more comfortable? Um, so I, I, I believe I'm understanding things. Uh, the, uh, it's splinted or some type of thing where you can't get access to topical things because that would be one place where if you could, without disturbing the fracture, if you could get uh, something like, like ice in because obviously the bandage is going to protect the uh, licking it back off, that would be useful. Um, I, I I don't know if she's asking something specific for RX or just a question in general. Yeah, that's kind of what I was. I was. I'm not too sure. Donna, uh, oh, was that Donna that asked the question? Whoever was uh, Charlotte that asked the question? Yeah, I don't know if that's actually related to the um, RX products. Uh, my Jack Russell yeah. had a rash about two years. He was on some antibiotics. Uh, it didn't help. What would you recommend? Anything for the rash? Well. The challenge with rashes is sometimes you can put something topically that would help the rash, but you have to, there's that, that tingle or uh, sensitive effect. Uh, so I guess I would say if it's a rash that's lasted for a couple of years, if you're going to use anything topical, and I think, again, probably, oh, you could probably use Calm on it, you could probably use Sentry on it, and I think either one of those things would be fine, but you're probably going to need one. We call them Elizabethan collars. You're probably going to need something to prevent the self-trauma. And again, I think the other anti-inflammatory things and antioxidant things, I think Moa and Vanali would be reasonable things to use. And again, that may or may not solve the whole problem, but it's certainly not going to hurt the problem if, if you're looking for something uh, with RX. And if you're looking something outside the realm of RX, well, hard to say because it's a rash. Rashes can be allergic. They can be autoimmune. They can be a lot of different things. So I guess I would say I'd hesitate in the sense of giving wrong advice to say a rash that's been there that long, that's been unresponsive. I'm not sure that I can give a pharmacologic recommendation uh, that would be of that do no harm category. Yeah, yeah, maybe I, I, I have um, my dog, she licks her paws, she, she licks them and licks them and licks them till there's other, um, and I've actually been putting the coconut oil on them. And although she's been licking them, it seems to be really healing them. So maybe, maybe the coconut oil could be, could be nice. Yeah, that would, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that, that would be one that I would think would be a problem, yeah. And I know there's a couple of questions in there about injuries and things like that. And I, I think I remember Deanna saying that um, mixing the, res, uh, um, the Restorix with some of the coconut oil and applying it to the area may have a healing effect um, on them. Am I correct in saying that as well, that that might be a little tip for, for the last couple of people there that had some questions? Yeah, uh, it probably will not be harmful. And I know there's some oh wow stories about to restore X in the sense of some people that have had you know those well the kind of problems like you know you're supposed to be dead in six months and you're not and I, again I, I think I think it may be useful in that regard I'm not sure I can point to anything in personal experience or the literature that would say a detoxification product done topically I don't know that I have anything to back it up, but uh, if it works, it works. And I, again, I don't see any reason why you couldn't do it. 
yeah, yeah. I've heard a couple of people saying now that they've used it on, they use it on skin, on, on blemishes, things like that. So look, it can't do any harm, as we say. So why not try it? So um, there's, there's a myriad of questions coming in there, guys, and I'd love to be able to answer them all. But it's, uh, it's getting late and we've been on this call a while and we've taken up, I think, enough of Terry's time today. You have been absolutely fantastic. We thank you so much for coming onto the call tonight. Um, you're for giving up your time. Um, you know, I feel personally, and I think you know this, that this is a huge area for us. If we can all start using the products on our animals, let them get great health, see the results from them, the benefits of it, then we can start speaking about this. This is a whole new market that we could potentially open up, and we're the first here in Europe to spot this um, opening and to go with it. So to have your support on that, Terry, is absolutely fantastic, and I know that everyone that plugged into the call, I'm sure that they thoroughly enjoyed it and enjoyed listening to you and learning from you and um, maybe another time we can do a call with your lovely wife wife Chris who is amazing by the way and um, you guys are consistently in the top sales people in the whole of the United States that's a huge huge accolade so we could learn an awful lot from people like you and um, I know that also in the January edition of the networking times which is a network marketing magazine in the United States you guys are front cover in the last edition am I right in saying that and you've got a great article inside and what I'm going to do is in our group and I'll pass it on to Karina too so she can put it up um, I will copy that so you can read the entire story of uh, Chris and Terry to see where they've come from, where they where they are right now and where you're going to because you have some exciting projects in the pipeline with your training system, which myself and Darren are going to look into now in the next week or so. And lots of different things happening for you in, in not only your 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 personal, your, your, your business life, but um, also in the overall grand scheme of things with Eric's being involved in so many exciting project so it's really great to be connected with you I am so proud and honored to have you on this call today I really really am I know that lots of people here got great value from what you've offered uh, tonight and um, if you could send me those PDFs with the information that you have I know that they would be greatly received with much appreciation and um, and unless you have anything else to add Terry I think that we can sign off here tonight uh, with great appreciation from the European market and um, we just thank you so much for being here have, have you anything to add would you like to would you like to say anything else to finish off with the guys well you've been you, you've been very kind and you uh, your your uh, your your summary of some of the things we're working on is accurate. Uh, we're we're really committed to this business. Uh, I kind of alluded to uh, you know for us it's it's a pretty big emotional deal. Uh, you know we've come from areas of time uh, where we've uh, been on the side of struggle and on the side of uh, it was hard not to view life as a life of scarcity and uh, that uh, that really isn't what life is. But you've got to take some steps to move that direction and so. Um, we, we applaud you guys the success uh, you know uh, you and, and other of the European leaders have done just a marvelous job in a very short period of time I would say we could learn a lot from you and probably should uh, cross the pond this way learn a lot from uh, the successes that you've all had uh, been a pleasure to be on I would be happy to do it again sometime and um, we're actually working on uh, reworking our blog relative to some of the, I hope, good, useful information uh, that people can use, uh, not just in, in the health and wellness portion of things, but hopefully in the how you build your business successfully thing. So uh, we'll try to keep you all uh, praised there, but uh, you can find us on LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. I am. Uh, any, anything we can do uh, that can add value to all of what you're doing, we would be happy to try to be of service. That would be absolutely amazing. And as they say, guys, and I know you hear this over and over again, but success leaves, leaves clues. So um, I would advise you to go on, follow Terry and his beautiful wife, Chris, and um, watch what they're doing, learn from them. Let's learn from the best, guys. So from us to you, Terry, thank you so much. I'm sure this won't be the last time that we'll um, have you grace the, 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 the team with all your amazing information. So thank you so much from us to you, from the European market to the American market. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. Right. Thank, thank you. Guys.